Hey guys, welcome back. So today I am a lot less swollen than I was. Um, I'm still a little swollen on this part of my face, but I don't think it's anything too noticeable, so I was like, I'm gonna film today. <laughs> so today I'm going to do a full face talk through tutorial, so it's probably gonna be a super long video, so you may wanna grab a snack, because I can only imagine that this video is gonna be like 30 minutes long, because I'm going to be doing a full face. Usually a full face I do if I'm going out, if I'm going to an event, if I know that I'm going to have my picture taken, so I am going to be applying a ton of makeup, but it looks great in photographs, or if you just want to be super, super glam for one night, this is what you can do. I'm going to hopefully be able to remind myself to give you guys tips and tricks as I'm doing it, because most of the time when I do my makeup, I kind of just get in the zone, and then I forget what I'm talking about when I'm doing my makeup, and then I'll be editing and I'll be like, Oh, you forgot to say this. So hopefully I can remember. I still have light hair. <laughs> I haven't dyed it dark yet, but that will be probably this week sometime. So yeah, because I don't like it. It looks dirty to me. Like dirty hair. He's dirty blonde. <laughs> okay, so we are going to jump in. I've already moisturized my face. Um, usually you know that I use the Hangover X by Too Faced, the Replenishing Facial Primer, but I am out of it, so I just used this Jerlique Rose Moisture Plus Moisturizing Cream. I put it on about 10 minutes ago because it is an actual moisturizing cream, so I wanted to give it a chance to actually soak into my face before I slapped makeup right on top of it, but I did moisturize. So now we can move on to priming our skin. For today, I'm going to use the Makeup Forever Skin Equalizer, and this is number two, which is the Smoothing Primer, and I'm just going to apply this to my problem areas, what I feel in my problem areas, um, places that I can see my pores and stuff like that. So I mainly just apply it to this area, kind of like this triangle part, like right where my little cheeks are, just to fill in any pores and blur the lines. I look so sleepy because I am. <laughs> I'm just going to pin my hair out of my face while we work. So next I like to move on to my foundation. Um, people have their certain preferences on how they like to put their makeup on. Me personally, I just like to do my foundation first and then move on to my eyes. I don't know why. Um, if I'm doing like a dark eye, sometimes I like to do my eyes first, but I don't know. I just always like to put my foundation on and then do my eye makeup. But if you want to do your eyes first and then your foundation, be my guest. But for today, I'm going to be using this combo of foundations. This is the Make It Forever HD foundation, and then this is the Cogendo High Definition Aqua foundation. As you can see, this one is a little too light, and this one is a little too dark, so I'm going to mix them together to give me my perfect color. So I'm just pumping the foundation out onto the back of my hand, and to mix it, I'm going to use this foundation brush from Sigma. It's just a flat foundation brush, and I'm going to actually be applying it with this, and then buffing it or and then blending it out with my beauty blender. So I'm just mixing the foundation right here on the back of my hand. And then we're just going to paint our face. So I don't you I don't like to apply like my foundation with this just alone, but I do like to apply it like this now, just paint it onto the face and then blend it out with a beauty blender. It's kind of the same technique that I already do, it's just I'm not dotting it on my face, I'm just applying it with this flat makeup brush. Um, this is just going to ensure that it gives me full coverage. So then taking my damp beauty blender, I'm just going to blend it all out. And if you haven't invested in a beauty blender yet, I highly recommend them to you. It's just one of the best makeup tools ever. <laughs> in my opinion, and it just makes everything a lot easier and faster. And my beauty blender is a little damp, which is how you want to use it. And I am just dragging down onto my neck to make sure that we are blending with our, the rest of our body. So then after our foundation is on, I like to move on to my brows. For the brows, I'm going to be using the Anastasia Brow Wiz Pencil, and this is in the color Taupe, and these are the natural color of my brows. I haven't lightened them in a pretty long time, um, so I just like to brush up. 
I stopped using the primer in them. I, I felt like it was just like an unnecessary step that I was doing because I set my brows at the end, um, so I felt like I didn't have to use the primer to start. So I first just like to go in with the brow pencil to get the desired shape that I want, and then I like to go back in and fill them in with a little bit of powder to make sure there's like no sparse hairs. And for me, when I do my brows, it's a lot easier for me if I'm like looking down into a mirror as opposed to if I'm looking like directly straight into the mirror. So I don't know if that will help you guys, but for me it just helps me with my brows. So I just like to go underneath the brow first to kind of round it out and extend the tail. So the reason that I go in first with the brow pencil is because I feel like I don't have as much control if I'm using just this guy to initially put my brow on. So I just feel like with the brow pencil I have a lot more control. So then after I have the tail um, extended to how I want, I go in to the front of the brow and I'm using short strokes with a really light hand just to fill in where I feel my brow is lacking, which it lacks a little in the front because it's a little sparse up here. So I'm just using really small strokes. And if you mess up a little bit, you can just go in and use the spoolie side to fix your mistake. But you want to use short strokes because you want to kind of create hairs and not like lines on your brow. So I keep going back to brush the front because we don't want our the front of our brow to look too heavy and have and look like it has too much um, product in it. So I just like to do little short strokes with a really light hand and then go ahead and brush it out with the spoolie. So then I'll start doing longer strokes as I'm working my way back to the arch. And then I like to turn my head to the side because I feel like you can just see the arch better in your brow. And then I'll start pushing it upwards and rounding it out. Still using a little strokes, but I'm kind of giving it a little more pressure. and then connect it to the end of the tail. Go back with your spoolie to brush everything up. And then now we have a brow. So I'll just usually leave him like this and then go ahead and work on the other one before I fill it in with powder. So I like to use the taupe color in my brows because I have, as you see, naturally dark brows. And I like to use a lighter color um, when I'm using the pencil because it helps to not make them too dark because I don't want them to be like black brows. Not saying there's anything wrong with having black eyebrows. I just, I don't want to have black eyebrows today. <laughs> So now that I have the basic shape of both of my brows, I like to go in with a little bit of brow powder. And this is my favorite brow pencil to use. This is from Anastasia, and this is the number 7 brush. I have tons of little brushes like this, but for some reason I feel like this one works the best. I don't know why, but I just think it does. Then I like to go in with this Pro Palette from Anastasia. This is all the brow shades, but um, I'm just using it because I have it. But she does sell them individually. I like to go in with this brush, and I take a little bit of taupe again, which just I like to use taupe because it keeps, it fills my brows in, but it doesn't make them look like super, super dark. So then I'll just go in, and I'll pr basically do the same thing. So I'll start underneath the brow and just extend the tip the tail, whatever you want to call it. And then I'll go in mainly to the arch because I feel like that's where I need the most product. And then I'll just use, again, light strokes and I'm going in upward motions. And then without picking up any more product, I'll just come to the front of the brow. And then use your little spoolie to push the product through your brows. 
and then that guy is done. So you can see the difference between this brow, you can still see that it's like super sparse up here, and then this one doesn't have that. After I do my brows, I like to move on to my shadow. I'm just going to be doing a neutral eye today because that's what I feel like the most popular eye is, and it's good for just everyday wear. And you can make a um, natural eye super glam, or you can make it super natural. So we're going to try to go a little glam on this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight underneath my brow bone. And I'm just using this no-name brush that I've had forever and ever and ever. I think I've talked about this brush before because a lot of you want to know what it is. And I've had this brush since I was like 16. But I think the last time I mentioned it, a lot of you were like, oh, you can still find it at Walmart. So check Walmart. Uh, I'm not sure if it still looks like this. Someone said it might be brown. But they said it's basically the same exact brush. I love this brush. It's been washed a bajillion times and he's still riding with me and I can't get rid of him so um, I'm just using Blanc from Anastasia or Blink what is this Blink? This is Blink from Anastasia um, and I'm just going to use this to highlight underneath my brow bone I like to work from the top down like I don't know why again it's just personal preference and I like to take it down just a little bit into my crease so that my eyelids aren't sticky I personally don't like to use an eye primer um, you can use one if you like but I just, I don't really, I've never been a fan of it really. I feel like it always made my shadows look a little chalky. And it didn't, it didn't blend well for me. Like, it would like drag, like, I don't know how to explain it. But I just never liked um, an eyeshadow primer. So for my crease, for, so for my first crease color, I'm going to use this color from Anastasia. And it's in the color Day Rate. And I just like to use this little uh, fluffy brush. This is from Beach Cosmetics, I believe. And I'm just going to run this in the crease um, just for a little dimension Beauty. yeah Where are you going? I might go eat with Perk I don't know how long this other shit takes Put on your nose ring on your shirt if you're gonna go out to eat so I like to use a smaller brush because it helps me just be a little more precise with my application and then it just keeps it neater for me. So I feel like if you're having a little trouble with getting your eyeshadows to look like you want them to, kind of use smaller brushes because it'll just help keep everything nice and, nice, nice and neat <laughs> and more precise on where you want it. Then I'm going to take the color Dusty Rose from Anastasia as well and I'm going to use the same brush that I've been working with. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. We're going to put him in our crease as well. And I'm kind of using windshield wiper slash circular motions for my eye. For my eye. It's so weird to actually like be talking and doing it. I'm just using circular motions to help blend and just work little by little. Just put a little bit of product on your brush, go in, blend it out, and then decide whether you want to put more on or not. Because what I find is... I don't really like my eye makeup until I have my liner and lashes on. I don't know, I'm just like a weirdo like that. So I just use a little bit at a time, and then after I have my liner and lashes on, then I can decide if I want to go back in and put more shadow on. I am looking at myself in the monitor because I can't see my mirror right here. So just blend and blend and blend. I have two different eyes. I don't know if you guys ever noticed, but one, I have more lid space than the other. Um, this one is a little more droopier than this eye. So I feel like I just concentrate more on this crease than this crease. Because I feel like this eye is always easy for me to put my shadow in because it's not as droopy as this eye is. So I just like to make sure I really define this crease. Okay, okay, okay. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of a lid color. Color. I can find a brush. So I'm going to keep this matte and I'm just going to add this cream shadow from Anastasia. And this is a MAC 242. 
the number is rubbed off. I'm just going to pick up some product and push this to my lid. I feel like I usually don't wear matte shadows on my lid. I like to wear like a shimmery shadow, but we'll put a matte shadow on here today. I'm just kind of feathering it up into the crease. Put a little more on. These flat brushes are great for your lid. Um, if you're applying a powder, a cream, or anything like that, this is just like my favorite brush to use. We're packing on that lid color. And going back with the BH Cosmetic brush, it doesn't have any other any excess product on it. I'm just using it to blend the eyelid and the crease color together. Taking that 242 one more time. I'm just packing on some more cream. And again, I'm just pushing the product onto my lid to prevent fallout. And by packing the color on, you're gonna get a better saturation of color by packing it onto your lid. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and do my liner and mascara now. I like to apply a coat of mascara before I do my winged liner. It just kind of helps me as a guide. And I'm going to be applying a false... And I'm going to be applying false lashes as well, so this just will prep your lashes for the falsies. I finally feel like my eyelashes have grown back since I got lash extensions put on. Is that what they're called? Lash extensions? <laughs> Um, I finally feel like they look normal again. I mean, I'm sure it's hard for you guys to tell, but for a while there, it was like I had no eyelashes. I was like, ugh, never again. I'm gonna use a liquid liner to do my liner. I've, I've tried everything. I just don't know why I always go back to liquid liner. It's just like the easiest medium for me to use. So wing liner is all about practicing, 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 practicing. Some days I will surprise myself and I'll draw on two identical wings. And I'll be like, yes, girl, draw those wings on. And then other days I'll just be like a six year old and I'll draw like a wing out to here. And then my other one will be like super short. And then I'll just take off my makeup off and I'm like, I can't do it. If you've ever seen that meme, you have to be super calm around liquid liner because it can sense your fear. So um, just find what works for you, whether it's a gel eyeliner, whether it's a felt tip pen, whether it's liquid liner, just practice using different um, ones so that you can find the perfect one for you. So I just like to use the NYC liquid liner. I just think it's so easy to use, well for me, and it's like a dollar, so you can't go wrong with it. So I just like to give my eye a little baby tug, and I've never, I don't think I've ever really done liquid liner on camera. So hopefully we can do this. So I just like to give it a little tug, a little, pull it a little taut. And then... Draw my initial line where I want my wing. And then I'll connect it upwards. And then you just have like a little triangle here and then you can fill it in. And then I like to go across, kind of starting in the center. Keeping it as close to the lash line as possible at first because first it's like a little janky and a little wiggly looking. That's okay because we can go back and fix it. So I just like to keep the line thin at first and then we can thicken it up. Again, you just want to be calm. 
So you just want to be careful with winged liner because it is so easy for it to get out of control because you'll be like, oh, I'm just going to thicken this up a little bit and the next thing you know, you have like winged eyeliner all the way up to your brow. So just be careful. Work in small little strokes and just remember to try to keep it, the line, super thin at first. So if you need to, you can go back and thicken it up without thickening it up too much. And we have our liquid liner on. <laughs> I'll just let that dry. Do my lashes, and then if we feel the need to, we can go back in and touch it up. But it looks, they look pretty even to me, which is surprising. Go me, go me. So now let's do some lashes. I'm going to use the Ardell 113s for this look. I usually like to use the Glamour Wispies, but I'm all out of Glamour Wispies, so I'm going to use these guys. Um, I do like to switch it up between the 113s and the Wispies. The Wispies are like my favorite lash of life. You can find them at the drugstore. They're super inexpensive, and they I feel like they look good on everybody's eye. The 113s I really love too. I feel like they do complement a lot of people's eyes. They're a little bit longer than the Wispies, so they do look a little more dramatic, but they kind of have the same feel to them. I just like to push them upwards so that you can actually see the lash and they're not like straight like like falling forward but they'll come to life more when we put mascara on them. So I'm gonna leave the eyes alone for a little bit let those lashes really set before we go back in and add any more shadow or mascara or any extra liner and now we can work on the rest of our face. So hmm, for what am I doing? For our under eyes, I'm going to use the MAC Pro Longwear today, and I'm going to use the color NC30. And I'm just going to pump NC30, and I'm just going to pump a little pump out onto the back of my hand. And then this is a MAC 195 brush. I'm just going to use this to apply it underneath my eyes. So I am going, it's going to look like I'm applying a ton of concealer underneath my eyes, which I kind of am, but I like to use my concealer to conceal and highlight as well. So I'm going to take it all the way up to the wing of my liner, and then we're going to draw straight down to our nose, and then we're going to come back up in this triangle form. So by concealing like this, it's way more effective of covering your dark circles as opposed to if you were to just cover your circle like that. Um, that's going to kind of accentuate your circle a little more. So by bringing the line, by bringing your concealer all the way down, it's really going to help hide that under eye circle that you have underneath there. So that's why I do it, and it will blend out the majority of the product once we get it going. I'm just going to take it all the way up to my wing. And I swear I try not to conceal like this all the time. I'll be like, okay, I'm not going to conceal like that. And then I just can't. I can't help it. This is the way I must conceal. So I know it looks crazy, but it works wonders. So I'm just going to tap it out a little bit with my finger. Uh, and, you, and by looking up, it'll help just really get the product in there but if you look down, it's gonna crease on you. So I just like to do a little tappage with my ring finger, and I'm sure you guys know that we use the ring finger because it has the lightest amount of pressure of any of the other fingers. Then I'm gonna take the Beauty Blender and really go in and blend this out. And I'm using the little pointy side and I'm pushing it into my face. As you see, we're not doing any swiping or rubbing or anything like that, we're doing pouncing motions. This is going to ensure that you get the coverage that you want and you're not going to take the product away. So we're going to go right up to there. I just don't know what we did in life without beauty blenders before. This just makes everything so easy. So now I'm going to set my under eye concealer and I'm first going to use the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder just to set it. Um, and I'm going to use this setting brush from Real Techniques. So I'm just going to tap a little bit into my lid, pick it up on my brush, tap off the excess, and then we're going to look up, blend out one more time with the Beauty Blender. Don't look down this whole time, just continue to look up. Blend, tap, 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 tap. So we're getting rid of any creasage that may have happened in the short amount of time that we were looking down. And then we're going to 
tap this product into our under eye area. Anywhere that you feel like you put, oh, I look down. Try not to look down. But I'm looking up into so many lights right now and I'm just like blinded. Oh, I can't see. <laughs> it's best if you can just continue to looking up, looking up. So I'm just going in one more time to tap out any creasage and then we'll go in and we'll set. I can't see anything. <laughs> it's so bright. And then you can look down eventually. <laughs> That's just going to help prevent creasing underneath your eyeballs because nobody likes creasing. Oh man! I wanted to use this product today. I just saw it. It's that Smashbox Photo Finish Hydrating Under Eye Primer. Wah! I brought it out and everything to use and then I forgot. <sighs> okay. So next we're going to do a little bit of contouring. I personally love contouring. I think it really makes the face. It kind of just shapes you and makes you... So I love it. So if you want to ensure that your contour lasts all day long, I would recommend using some kind of cream contour. This is the Anastasia Cream Contour Kit. Or you can just use a darker foundation in these areas, kind of just to mark out where your contours are and then set it with a powder. I'm too lazy all for all that, so I usually never really cream contour beforehand unless... I'm like gonna like do a video on it or something, but it's a very rare occasion that I will actually cream contour just because like I said, I'm lazy and I don't wanna do all that. So I'm just gonna contour regularly today and I'm gonna start by using this <coughs> Marc Jacobs, what is this? This is their light filtering contour powders and this is in the color 40. So I'm gonna use the contour side and I'm first going to just contour with a, this is from Morphe and this is the 501 brush. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the contour powder. It is kind of chalky. And then I'm going to go from the top of my ear down. So I'm going to start from here and then come down. So I can kind of see my face is still a little swollen, but you can kind of see there's just a natural shadow right here. Um, this side you can see it a little more. So I'm just going to follow that. So I'm going to go from here and then we're going to go right in here. I kind of like to stop here, like you can see where your smile is, so you don't want to take this all the way down into here, because then it would look a little cray, in my opinion. Well, these powders are very nice, actually. This part, I'm gonna, we are gonna bake, I'm gonna show you how to bake in this video, um, but, so, I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not too worried about being like super, super precise because I, I will be able to fix this underneath part because most of the time when you're doing your contour, you want to keep the color above this line, but I'm gonna bake today so you, it'll clean this up and really make it like, like a perfect contour situation. Um, I'm gonna go in with this contour brush from Real Techniques and just like, broaden this up a little more. Do a little on my chin because I have a little pointy chin. Do a little under this jawline. Not so much on it but more like under it just to create a shadow that we have like a strong jaw. This contour is a little lower than I like, so you'll see we'll clean that up in a second. I'm gonna put some up here on the temps. Okay, so we're gonna bake really quickly. And baking is just when you apply a light colored powder to your highlighted areas to really clean everything up. For me, it helps my um, contour to prevent from getting muddy and kind of coming down too far. Look at this baby hair up here coming down too far on my face. So as you can see, this one doesn't look as clean as it could. This one actually looks pretty good. This one needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'm just going to take the back of, this is just my little travel palette, and we're going to use the Ben Nye Banana Powder, and I'm just going to dump some out onto the back of this. And then using these cosmetic sponges from the drugstore, you can find these anywhere, I'm going to use the side that's a little higher, and then we're just going to let the powder set on our face. 
So I'm just gonna dunk it in. You wanna make sure you pick up a lot of powder. And then we're going to just carve out right underneath there. And we're just gonna let this powder sit on our face. It may seem like a, why would you do that step? But it really makes such a difference in how your like makeup wears throughout the day. Um, anytime you guys are like, oh my God, look at your contour. It's because I baked. It's because I let it sit and bake. You can do the same thing underneath your eyes with this powder. But I don't, but you can. <laughs> So then I'm just going to let that sit there. You want to move this out of the way because that guy is deadly and dangerous and he will blow all over the place. Um, and then we're going to apply blush. So I'm going to apply, I don't have a blush out here, do I? No. For blush, I'm going to use a combo of these two colors right here. This guy is Make You Mine and then this guy is Stubborn. I'm just going to do a little combo of both. So now I'm going to highlight my cheekbones just a little bit and I'm using the Compact Shine On and this is number 3 from Makeup Forever. And then this is a tapered highlighting brush from Sigma and I'm just going to push this right here like on the highest points of my cheekbone. And then I like to do a little right here above the brow. Put some right on the cupid's bill with my finger. So we can get rid of this bake now. I'm just going to dust it off. And we can come in and blend all this together. So now I'm just going to go back in with a little bit of the same shadows we were using. So I'm going to take the cream shadow again and then just come in here and brighten this up. So I'm just pushing it right on there using a really soft hand to do it too. Doing it right up to the crease. Push, push, push. Push, push, push. Just getting it right up to that liner and pushing it on right to your crease. Then I'm going to go in with a small little blending brush from Sigma. This is the E36 brush. And I'm going to go back in with that same color we were using in the crease, which was Dusty Rose. Dusty Rose. And then I'm just going to intensify the crease a little bit. Again, by using these smaller brushes, you're just helping yourself out because you're giving yourself more precision. Then we can go in and touch up the liner a little bit just to make sure it's black like our souls. Just kidding. Um, just to make sure it's still nice and black and it didn't get any fallout from that extra shadow we just put on. And then we can do a little bit of top mascara and we're almost done. We have the bottom lash to do and lips. It's been forever, right? <laughs> So now our lashes look a little more lively. Now for the under eyes. I'm going to go back with the same color that we were using, which was Dusty Rose, which looks like this. And this is a flat definer brush from Sigma. I like to use the flat definer because I feel like I just get a better application and it's a lot more neat than if I were using like a pencil brush. I like to use a pencil brush when I want to blend it out. Um, but the definer I like to use when I'm first applying it because it just helps me to control it. And then we can apply mascara to our lower lash line as well. I have to get really close to the 
mirror to do this. So now I'm just going to set these brows. I like to use the Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel. I like to use the tinted more than the clear because the tinted will help to lighten them, one, because I'm using brunette, and two, it'll help fill in any of the little sparse areas that I may have missed. And then we're almost done. We're almost done. I'm sure this video is like at 30 minutes right now, right? <sighs> Okay, so for lippies, I'm going to line them first. So I line my lips because I like to even out my lips. Now, I'm sure nobody else would notice, but when you look at your face every single day, you notice these things. And this part of my lip goes up higher than this part of my lip. Now again, I'm sure nobody notices, but because it is my face and I look at her every day, I notice these things. So by using a lip liner, it just helps to even everything out. So I guess I kind of do overdraw that side of my lip just a little bit. So I'm going to use the Dervish Lip Liner from MAC, and I'm going to start on the bottom. And then I will draw this part of my lip a little higher, and then just round this side out. Then I'm going to use the Kamichi Doll Lipstick, which is the new lipstick from Gerard Cosmetics. I love this color. It is super similar to me to my favorite Dose of Colors lipstick, which is Soft Touch. And you know I'm obsessed with that lipstick, so this one is super similar to it. I'm loving this color lately, and I'm just going to put this in the center. I'm going to tap it out with my finger. Now you could leave your lip like this if you wanted to, if you're down with that whole matte lip. I tried to get down with the whole matte lip movement, but I'm a gloss girl. I love a gloss, and I need a gloss in my life, so I'm going to put a gloss on. But you can leave it like this if you want, and the gloss I'm going to use is this one from NYX. This has been like my favorite gloss lately, and it has no name on it because I got it in one of these like packs from like a holiday collection that I found at like Kohl's or something. So I don't know the name, but it's like my favorite gloss ever at the moment, so I'm just going to put this right on top. Are you a gloss girl or are you a matte lip girl? Tell me. Ding. And then I'm going to finish my face with my Best Damn Facial Spray just because I like to always end any makeup look with a setting spray just because it kind of helps all the powder set and you don't look cakey when you use a finishing spray, so a finishing spray is a must to me. I need it in my life and I need it today. So. That is it. This is our completed face. I'm going to leave my hair pinned just because this hair has been getting on my nerves and I don't like it. <laughs> so that is it for this full face tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and if you've hung around this entire time of the video, that is an internet high five for you. You're the real MVP so I thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me. Um, <clears throat> let me know how you feel about these talk through tutorials. Should I do more of them? Do you like the voiceover? I just feel like a voiceover is like an easier video. Like it's not like a 30 minute long video but let me know if you like these 30 minute long videos. I'll keep doing them. So that is it guys. I don't have anything else to say except I love you. Thank you so much for watching and until next time I will talk to you guys soon.